Miami 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 Welcome 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 ZP Podcast, I'm Rosa Carlo Navas, and with me today, no one. I gave everyone the day off. It's been a, um, it's been a, it's been a busy playoffs. It's, uh, it's, uh, we're, we're Thursday, we're approaching the weekend. We got some, some weekend games coming up. We got a Friday hangover time with everybody on deck. We got a Sunday hangover time with everyone on deck. We're excited. We're moving. Uh, chat is happy that I don't have a Boston guy. I got to be honest. I don't know many Boston bloggers or, or podcasters. I know I'm actually kind of like pretty friendly with like some of Boston, like, you know, part of Celtics Twitter. Uh, I'm in a couple of group chats of like these Celtic anime fans. They're pretty cool. And I don't really know. I mean, really a lot of the big Boston guys are national, right? Like there's like Keith Smith who does a good job, but I don't think he'll come on here and Obviously, like Simmons and, and those guys that are, you know, a little big time. Uh, <laughs> Crap says Rohan. Rohan and Cardi is a Boston guy. I actually asked Rohan, but he's doing some writing, so could, couldn't join us today. So it's just me. So it's just me. You know, we don't have too much to say. I, I want to talk a couple things before I kind of get into, like, the adjustments and everything that we're going to look for in game two. I just want to talk about this team and particularly Jimmy. And how improbable this run is. I, I couldn't help but kind of marvel today. I, I I mean, literally last night, I I mean, I picked the Celtics in six. And I know everybody's going to make fun of me and call me a coward. And we could put me on receipts or whatever. I just, you know, I thought that the shooting of this team would eventually kind of go back to closer to what it was during the regular season. And that still might happen. But we just got to marvel at this team was left for dead, dude. Like, a lot of us didn't believe in them. The fans didn't believe in them. I don't even know how much they believed in themselves. And for them to to be truly one of the most anemic offenses in Heat history with Jimmy Butler and Bam and Lowry and Spo, you know, to have all those guys and to still have just such a bad offense. We were sick of all the role guys. We were sick of Struess. We were sick of Vincent. We were sick of everybody. Even when Kevin Love got here, it was a uh, it was a honeymoon short lived. They started him. They 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 stopped starting him. It didn't look so good. We were back and forth on that, and for them to just look like they have been this, they've been dominant in the playoffs. They're third in net rating. Uh, they would probably be second or first. They'd probably be second in net rating if not for Boston's gajillion point win against Philadelphia in Game Seven. They were second for most of the playoffs behind Denver, who was just been a juggernaut as well. The fact that this team put up over 40 points in a quarter against one of the league's best defenses is insane. It's absolutely insane. And it's a it's a tribute to what Jimmy Butler has kind of done in these playoffs, elevate his game to a place continually beyond what any of us can reasonably expect. 56 at home against the Bucks was just... I mean, we were talking about it as one of the greatest Heat playoff performances of all time. We were putting it there with LeBron James and Dwayne Wade. This is a franchise that had those guys, had Shaquille O'Neal, Alonzo Mourning. This organization is, is one that ho holds parades, that raises banners, that has championship alley. This is not the Sacramento Kings, all due respect to them. It's not the Charlotte Hornets. This is an organization that has history. It's storied in 35 years of, of of brilliant, vibrant history. And for a guy like Jimmy to come in here and just absolutely flip all of our expectations. I think even the biggest people that wanted Jimmy Butler, he has exceeded every expectation we could have ever had for him. Absolutely everyone. And it's unreal to, to be here to watch him do yet again, just rip out a team absolutely shred a team. Oh, Rob Williams going to switch on me. Take that Go into the basket. Oh, you're going to play the Milwaukee deep drop against me. Yeah. I'm getting right to the rim. There is no coverage for him except just straight up hard double teaming him and him hitting out to open shooters. In reality, the te teams have decided that they cannot let him have the ball. They can't. And that's just crazy that we're here. Man. 
I, how often did we see people do that to Dwayne Wade? You know what I mean? Like to LeBron. It just speaks to Jimmy, everything that he is, everything that he's accomplished, and the kind of guy he is. The fact that he says shit like, I think we could win a title, and you all know that you fucking believe that he believes that. Maybe we think he's crazy, and he, in his heart of hearts, he has that energy that you're like, wait, wait a second, maybe. <laughs> this guy might be onto something. And he plays like it. He backs it up. It's not like Al Horford calling the timeout Right, being all fucking goofy when the Celtics go up nine and he, he kind of calls time out from Miami. It's not like that goofy shit, dude. It's like Jimmy has those moments in like take your heart moments. Right? He does it when he's down in a game where he tells Drew Holiday, you know, I own you or on your head, whatever, whatever version of the story you want to believe. It's him hitting that three and doing the wink and point to the bench. It's steal your heart moments, man. It's shit that we'll remember forever. And it's, it's just, again, a tribute to everything that he is and everything that he's accomplished. Credit to the role guys. Credit to Gabe. Credit to Max. Credit to Caleb fucking Martin. I saw a tweet that said one of the most underappreciated parts of this heat run is that Caleb Martin has turned into some version of Paul George. It's fucking it's a it's funny and B it's true. The way that he, he's Zach Lowe said on his podcast today that Caleb Martin is shooting 71 percent from two. 71 percent from two. Absolutely unreal. Max Struess, Gabe Vincent hitting big shot after big shot, competing on defense, doing all the things that you need your role guys to do. Kevin Love stepping in as a starter, doing everything that he has to. Has had some bad games, has had just as many good games. Outlet passes, open threes, high-low passes, running pick and roll, screening all over the place, setting pin down. Everything that you would want. A presence in the locker room that Kyle Lowry said, he brings us joy. He brings a little joy to this team. And you could see it. We've talked about it on Heat. We've talked about it on a Hangover Time. Just the vibe that he brings and that energy, that veteran presence. And sometimes we need a little bit of joy to be the best, to be our best selves. I think the idea of like, you know, and, and I think for a while we all kind of believed in like this hardline stuff that the winning brings a joy, not joy brings winning. And I think in a lot of instances that's correct. But I do think when you have a good environment and when you like the people you're with, you are going to perform better, even at the height of competition where you might think that your motivation stats are maxed out. The environment matters. These guys are veterans. I think for a team that we thought was all sick of each other, all of a sudden looks like they love each other. And that could be the winning because uh, winning does winning is a great elixir in sports, but to run as an eight seed with an anemic offense to absolutely shred every team. It's just incredible. It's absolutely incredible. Miami had a 128 offensive rating yesterday. Truly insane to, to, to imagine that a team could do that, that this team could do that. Let's get into the game. Let's get into what happened, what we can think about, how, how, how Boston could adjust. I think one of the biggest kind of battlegrounds in the series was going to be how much can Boston help off a weak side shooter like Caleb Martin or Kevin Love or gave Vincent or Max Drews. And the answer in game one was not a lot. And I think Boston, watching the film, Boston is a lot of times caught between, do I help, do I not help? I don't know, this guy's a good shooter. Ah, Jimmy's going to the basket. Oh, wait, nope, that's a score. And I saw Jalen Brown in a couple possessions. You know, he has Gabe in the corner, and he's like, do I leave Gabe, do I not? I don't know. And then he has to, like, look because the Heat players move. And I think that's the big difference between the P.J. Tucker team and this team. And I, I think P.J., is incredible and obviously I would have taken PJ on this team in a heartbeat. He's he's incredible and he does different things. But what they do now is they're a more motion heavy team. If Gabe's in the corner, he's gonna relocate. If Duncan's in the corner, he's relocating. Max is relocating. Caleb as well. Caleb can attack a closeout really well. Again, seventy one percent from two. A lot of that is attacking the rim off closeouts and he's become a very good finisher. And that's that's kind of freaked Boston out. They have to keep their eye on their back to make sure the shooter doesn't move. You have action on the strong side. You have movement on the weak side. And Miami does this a lot. Well, they'll run a pick and roll on the right side of the floor. And on the left side of the floor, they're running some off-ball screening actions. Sometimes it's even Jimmy in those off-ball screening actions. And he's been so deadly as a cutter. I mean, he'll, he'll cut. He'll kind of stand out behind the three-point line four or five feet back. And his defender is like, well, Jimmy's all the way out there. What do I care? They kind of pinch in to help. And Jimmy cuts behind them with the head of steam. 
gets to the basket. It's just brilliant stuff that that what they're doing. They they're clicking. They're just clicking and and Boston had 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 some questions to ask about how are we going to defend them? And I think they're going to watch some film and going to probably be a little sharper for game 2. I thought they were very non-committal defensively for a lot of that game. I thought they didn't know which way they wanted to go. Eventually, they started sending a lot of help at Miami, and the shooters were just so open. I mean, there were so many in-rhythm open shots that Miami was getting. It wasn't one of those that Miami hit a bunch of garbage uh, contested shots. It was They were open in-rhythm looks. And listen, in Game 2, they couldn't miss all those looks. We know that this team can go cold. They did what they, they, they got what they came for. And I, I even, the Heat always posts these videos now in this playoff run of like in the locker room, you know, kind of the, the little like post, post game motivation speech. I think it was Kevin Love and he said, we, we got what we came for. Right. So they got what they came for. They're playing with house money in game two. Boston, obviously, the nine, the line jumped to nine and a half. So the, the, the line yesterday was Boston eight and a half, uh, minus eight and a half. They were favored. Tomorrow, it's, it's minus nine and a half. We'll see what. I, I'm, I'm assuming Scott Foster incoming. I don't think he's ref a game so far in the in the conference final. So uh, I believe Tony Brothers is doing today uh, for Lakers. So just just watching the Scott Foster, just watching the Scott Foster story. How how see how that develops? We know Miami's record's not too good with him. I don't think there's some sort of grand conspiracy, but it's good to uh, it's good to watch. So and by the way, Chad, if you have any questions about the series. Anything that you want to know, please hit me up. Listen, we're we're having we're conversational. Uh, we're conversational today. Uh, Lecce's agenda says Scott Foster will one thousand percent, one million percent, or ten million percent. I don't know. It's a lot of zeros. Be at the official tomorrow. I I imagine so. I I imagine so. So I thought that was kind of an interesting kind of battleground in the series, and I thought Miami kind of very very emphatically won that. Uh, they can't help off those guys like they were doing PJ for all the reasons I stated. The movement, the shooting is just better. These guys are more consistent. They're playing with a little more confidence, a little more zip. And Boston's two big lineups just aren't working as well. Part of it is because of that. And I just think that Rob Williams and Al Horford are, are a little worse than they were last year. And I think Jimmy has kind of figured out how to attack them. So Williams was in a deep drop against Jimmy toward the start of the game. That that changed. They played him a little tighter. Uh, but that deep drop, I mean, he just shredded Brooke Lopez and Giannis with it. Rob Williams is, is just easy. Right, that's easy money, and when Al Horford's not in the game, that that backline help is Jalen Brown. That backline help is Malcolm Brogdon. That backline help is not bothering Jimmy Butler whatsoever. I think Marcus Smart is their best bet, and I'll credit this: Miami has done a really good job of keeping Marcus out of help positions. They kind of get his shooter somewhere on the floor that's easy to access off off a pass. So if he's on whoever he's defending, and he hasn't really defended Jimmy one on one a lot yet. That's not a matchup that that Boston has kind of set on. They've had Tatum and Brown and all these guys on them. I imagine we'll see more Marcus Smart on Jimmy. I imagine that Boston's not going to give up switches as easy to to Jimmy as well. And we'll get into that in a second. But I think Miami did a really good job of manipulating Smart out of help positions. Kind of like how other teams earlier in the year would get Bam in a pick and roll to switch and then flip the ball to the other side of the floor, kind of eliminating Bam from the play. You get the switch early, blah, blah, blah. Miami has really adjusted to that, by the way. Credit to them. I mean, they've kind of seen that coming. They don't give up those early switches. They've dropped a lot more. They play zone, all that stuff to, to kind of keep down on all that. But I, I thought that was great by Spo. Um, one of the things that Boston did early that I thought was also interesting was because they had Gabe Vincent on Jalen Brown to start. So they started with Gabe Vincent on Jalen Brown, they started Max Strus on Marcus Smart, and they started Kevin Love on Al Horford. And what Boston did early was they would spam Marcus Smart, Kevin Love, pick and roll over and over again with an empty corner. And that got open Al Horford shot, Marcus Smart into the paint. Bam has to come over to help. Shuffle pass to Rob Williams, dunk, shuffle, kick out to the corner, off the help. Easy offense, Boston was moving. Jalen Brown, I don't think Gabe had a good job, did a good job on Jalen Brown. Probably has to get a little more size on him. Obviously, he has a shaky handle, and you think Gabe can kind of pester him. But what – I mean, Jalen was just getting into the paint over and over again, especially off early offense. I think that was kind of the other key to Boston was they were just getting into offense quick in that second quarter, and a lot of that was off Miami misses. And I think, like, they're off – and we're going to get into, like, the offense and the defense and how they feed into each other. But, you know, off misses, Boston was killing Miami. So off live rebounds – uh, Boston had a 214 
offensive rating. It's crazy, right? That's off live rebounds. So, like, if Miami was, was missing their shots, Boston was coming the other end and absolutely shredding them. Miami, by the way, had a 200 offensive rating on live ball rebounds. So they were they were similarly shredding Boston the same way. But, you know, that, that second quarter when those floodgates opened, it was missed shot. It was pushing the pace. Miami does not have a set defense. Their help is not in place. Jalen Jalen and Jalen Jalen and Jason can attack, get to their spots, and it's kind of lights out for them if you're the Heat. Kind of moving on, you know, and also we talked about Gabe Vincent on Jalen. One of the things that, that Boston did defensively, offensively, excuse me, was um, you put Jalen Brown in the dunker spot. So what happens with that is whenever Jason Tatum attacks, that low man is now not the weak side guy, right? So Jalen's not in the corner and Gabe is not kind of rotating and help that way. Jalen's in the dunker spot. He's right under the rim. And now that help from, from Gabe Vincent makes sense, right? Gabe's going to slide over where Jason Tatum kind of beats his guy off the dribble or he's working that side. They're going to send Gabe Vincent over to help or they leave him there and Jalen can offensive rebound over him because he's smaller. And now that now you manipulate Gabe into being that last kind of helper which means that Jalen's open for a dunk or he's open for offensive rebounds. And that killed the Heat. Killed the Heat for a lot of ways, kind of made their defense in, in flux, all that stuff. Boston got a ton of open looks off that. Guys were helping all over the place. They were just in bad rotation. Great adjustment by Spo in the second half. They moved Gabe off of him. They put Jimmy. They put Bam. They put all sorts of wings all over the place, and they try to keep those matchups away from them to kind of, okay, well, if you're going to put Jalen in the dunker spot, we're putting Bam on him. We'll see if you keep doing that, which that promptly ended. Same with kind of the way that they were switching the Bam and Jimmy pick and roll, right? Jimmy would kind of run a Bam pick and roll on the, with an empty corner. Boston was switching that with Horford, kind of discombobulated Jimmy a little bit. Um, so, you know, they, they, Boston did a couple things that were interesting, but Miami started flipping the matchups. The third quarter, they do that. They do that switch. Well, you know what? Bam! I'm gonna put Jason Tatum under the hoop. And that's what he did. He did the thing we've always wanted him to do: attack switches, back to the basket, face up, whatever it takes. Go quick, go early, get a foul, get to the cup, get some free throws, get some baskets. Same with against Jalen, all those guys, and that kind of nullified the Celtics doing that. So that kind of that kind of went to bed. Uh, Boston was sending two at Jimmy. That's easy. They're sending late help. Jimmy knows sometimes, you know, uh, Jimmy's getting ready to pull up. They, the Marcus comes over to help late. Jimmy's like, that's easy. That's an easy pass. Boom, Caleb in the corner. We're up seven. Hits that three. Big, big shot. My Credit to Spo. Been fucking, uh, maybe his best postseason run ever. Has just been on top of everything. The halftime adjustments have been insane. He's been on point. He's not waiting a game. He's not waiting too long. He's like, okay, this isn't working. We're switching. And that's like, I just gave you like one example of that stuff of kind of the defensive matchups. Okay, well, we're going to put Jimmy on smart because we're getting killed off penetration. So we're going to put Jimmy on smart. We're going to put Bam on Jalen. We're going to put Max on Tatum. Max, you got to hold the fort. We're going to send a ton of help your way, but we got to make sure that the biggest dribble penetrators are kept out of the paint. And that's what they did. And their Boston's bigs didn't punish any of the matchups on the other end. Kevin Love. Held his own in the second half defensively. You need that. A lot of hard shows, recover, fight, all that stuff. And Kyle Lowry, man. Kyle Lowry in that second quarter, it could have gone way more sideways. He kept them afloat on offense. Didn't have a big second half offensively. Hit a couple shots here and there. But really in that third quarter, just hit a bunch of big shots. Kept them afloat. Kept them organized. He didn't close. He did not close that game. Gave Vincent, and I think earned the close because in the second half, Kyle went a little cold. But you just need your guys to give you a quarter when everything's going sideways. Hey, just keep us in the game. Let's just not – because you saw in that Nick game, Miami came back from like 17 or 20 down or something. You know, you you fall short a couple points. You just want to keep yourself where it's doable. You just got to keep yourself around. That's what guys like Kyle did. So credit to him and, and kind of hitting those big back-to-back -back threes. I saw Poulter go say – Back-to-back -back threes was nice. It has this really nice kind of – it's back in his repertoire. He'll kind of snake the pick and roll and get to that elbow jumper. He's so good at it. That turnaround in the lane – that turnaround jumper in the lane, so automatic for him lately. He's been so good at it, uh, getting the defender on his hip and going up, carrying contact, finishing at the rim. All that stuff really good. His pick and roll with Zeller, absolutely incredible. 
Uh, Ryan Prevero says, I love step back and transition was a real punch in the mouth. I tweeted the balls on Kevin to do that. That was balls of steel. I fucking love that shit. I love when guys do that. And I do think that their transition offense can be a little bit ant sometimes. That was not one of those instances. Last night, it was so good. I think I'm trying to pull up the stats. Um, yeah, I was okay. Miami was 150 uh, points per possession, or, or I should say uh, offensive rating, or rather, off steals in transition, 177, 178, really, offensive rating for the Heat in transition. So really good, 95th percentile. Uh, that's that's great stuff for them. Obviously, the, the stuff off the live rebounds was uh was great let's just commissioner says tatum wasn't the same after max put his ass in jail at the end and it, it was a team effort it wasn't just max it's like max has to hold the fort long enough so that they can send enough help they forced a ton of turnovers i think jimmy kind of playing the passing lanes you see he's the best at doing that he's probably the best in the league maybe one of the best ever if not the best ever that might be blasphemous to say but the way that he plays the passing lane so aggressively kind of gets he he scares you into passing the ball it's absolutely fucking crazy. And these teams are terrified of him passing. They just don't want to pass the ball near him. It's it's, it's pretty insane what what he's kind of capable of. And again, putting Derek White in the torture chamber. I thought Boston was giving up that switch way too easy. I don't really understand the Peyton Pritchard minutes. It's kind of weird. I don't I don't I know that Grant Williams is in the is in the Joe Missoula doghouse for some reason, but I expect him to play more in game two. He makes a little bit more sense. He bothers Bam. There's a history. They have a history going back to high school. It's one of the worst kept secrets in the league. Those guys are very competitive with each other. And Bam has some problems against 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 Grant Williams. Uh, Bam did not look too uncomfortable against Horford or Rob Williams. Went at them offensively. That was as aggressive as I've seen him in a long time. Very active. Very decisive. I think Alf liked the word decisive more than aggressive because we know that he's aggressive, but it's really the decisiveness in which kind of he acted. So you love to see that out of Bam. You kind of like that. And for Boston's adjustments, I don't think it's too complicated. I think they got to see how long they can ride the two big lineups. So they were minus 10 and 18 minutes yesterday. Uh, that was set on the low post today. I'm wondering how long they go to that and how much they're going to see if Miami shooting drops off a little bit, because that's the other kind of thing. It's like, do teams believe in this heat shooting? The Bucks didn't, and they paid for it. The Knicks didn't, and the Heat shot 30% from three. They just helped off everybody and double Jimmy over and over again. He, he got what they came for. You know, they're they're okay for a stinker. So my camera goes out. So that's going to be an interesting thing to see. If, is Boston going to over-adjust to Miami shooting or not? You could see that they were a little bit indecisive that game. I'm sure that we're going to see a more clear version of their plan. You know, again, late they were helping on Jimmy. They were doubling. They were sending traps. Late, late help. All that stuff. If I'm if I'm Missoula, I either send early help or not so late help, but like medium late help. Like I, I want, I don't want to bail him out. I don't want to bail Jimmy out with an open pass because he'll take that every time. But I do want to make him felt and get him pushed off his spots. I do think that they have to go over screens and play him a little bit closer. You can't go under screens against Jimmy anymore. He just eats up that space too quickly and too physically. Those, those are kind of a couple of things that I think Boston can do. I think you could send two at him in the pick and roll um, and then rotate over. I thought Boston's rotations were not particularly great. And I think they got to stop giving up the switches. I think you got to show Derek White really, really show really, really hard and recover and maybe kind of play play up closer to the level of the screen if you're the drop big if it's Horford if it's if it's Williams I think the the deep drop just lets Jimmy get to that 10 foot baseline jumper which it's just too easy for him or he just gets to the rim so if I'm Boston that's what I'm kind of looking to adjust I'm looking to run a little bit more I mean they got really good stuff off of smart I think they might want to see if they keep Jimmy on him to start maybe give yourself some some stuff like that Boston didn't really try to hunt. I mean, Miami doesn't play as many small guys anymore. And that's one of the only benefits of not playing Tyler Hero is now you lose that like really easy small target where he has to show hard and recover all that stuff. And you kind of see with Boston and, and Derek White, Jimmy Butler kind of finds him, puts him in pick and roll. It's torture chamber stuff. And Peyton Pritchard too. These guys are too small. They're not strong enough. And Jimmy just kind of puts them under the basket. So they can't give up that switch easy. 
that's the other th- that that's kind of one of the main things I, I i think they're going to try to do show recover all that stuff they might throw a little zone in miami's way kind of disrupt their their penetration because i mean really a lot of their threes were off jimmy penetration um waiting for the duncan game duncan didn't do too much of anything yesterday hope he kind of could get going and they really gotta i, I think they gotta try to crush miami you know, on the boards, especially when they have those two bigs out there. I mean, I, I think my, they played pretty much an even rebounding game. If I'm Miami, I, 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 I take that every time. You know, I think that you just don't want it to be like the Knicks series where there's games where you're getting out rebounded by ten or something. You got to keep that close. Uh, I'm sorry, in the Buck series, uh, you got to keep that as close as you can. Uh, Polter Gostum says, "What lineup do you think Boston throws the zone at?" So. I think when when Williams, I think you could do a zone with Williams. I think that makes a little bit more sense with Horford. You're a little more switchable, so I don't really think so. I'm not really, I wasn't really a fan of the Rob Williams switching. So I think that you could do some of that. I think if you go really really small, they can go smart at the five. You can do some of that. Although you can be very switchy as well. So it kind of depends. I don't, I don't really know. I, I don't. I I'm not gonna lie and pretend that I'm very familiar with when or how Boston uses zone just something that I, I think that if Miami is getting too much penetration off Jimmy uh, off Jimmy actions or off Caleb Martin closeouts I think that there's things that you can do to kind of slow that down a little bit I listen and I you can't you can't help but be happy they got the one on the road they won convincingly the, that second half was hardly ever close the game was a little tight at the end Tatum had the a billion turnovers in a row to close the game and yeah, Smeathan says, do you look dead? Go rest. I am dead, Smeathan. I'm, I'm very tired. But I'm here for the people watching film. I have a friend in town tonight, so we're going to go out, have some drinks, have some dinner. I'm really excited for that. Hopefully get some espresso, a little coffee in me. Uh, Polter goes and says, Hannah took all my energy. Ah, I miss her so much, guys. You don't understand. Call me, Hannah. Uh, <laughs> and, and that's kind of where I see game two going. I still think it's a feel-out series despite these team playing three times in the last four years i do think that there's a there's enough difference to make it okay well how do we play this on their end i I thought defensively miami had a great game plan in the second half as we talked about already i I don't think there's much for the heat to really adjust or change i think for the heat you just kind of do what you were doing in that second half and then react to whatever boston does i thought all the changes they made were correct i'm interested to see if jimmy just starts on smart or if that's something that they go throughout the game Obviously, you know, you look for Tatum to have a big game, you know, following kind of his I mean, he had he had a 30 point night, but I know that it was a 30 point night that he he wishes he could have back. So looking for him to be aggressive early, kind of hoping Max can hold hold the fort there. They're going to send a ton of help, all that stuff. Boston's going to shoot better from three as well. I believe they shot have the numbers here. So they shot uh, cleaning the glasses and have the have the aggregate numbers, but they didn't shoot too great from three yesterday. I believe they were in the mid thirties, if I'm correct. So I know Miami shot fifty four percent from three, and Boston shot thirty four percent from three. So, so not super great for either team. Obviously, Boston has been really good following game one losses pretty much the last couple of years. So, Poulter goes and says, "Bro, kidney stones is my nightmare." Oh yeah, I I was passing a kidney stone, and uh, Chad Ryan's Pereira said I passed it. I did at two a.m. last night, which is why I'm so tired. <laughs> I got the I got the surprise at two a.m. So I have it. Uh, yeah, but it's gone. Thankfully, I can go to the doctor and find out what it's made of. And hopefully, uh, you know, it's funny, guys. I'm pretty sure that this stone was uh, was a result of eating a lot of spinach and kale. So those are two things that 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 give you kidney stones if you eat a lot of and my ass thinking I'm going to be healthy is and and, and raspberries, raspberries uh, and spinach are, are like two of the, the, the things that produce the most kidney stones. And I've been eating a lot of that. I've been having like berry smoothies and, and I eat a lot of spinach lately. So it's kind of funny how me thinking I'm being healthy and I produce a kidney stone. Um, really hilarious. And yeah, so all, all that, all that good stuff. Not to make this about my health. I'm good. We're here for the playoffs. We're active. We're excited. I am so pumped for game two tomorrow. Is it tomorrow? It is tomorrow. Tomorrow's Friday. Oh, happy Friday, everybody. So we'll see you then. Remember pregaming before Game two, also hangover time following every single game this postseason. It's hangover times last year, man. What a way to go out. We gave Brass a series against the Knicks. We're giving, we're giving Alf his farewell slander tour. Uh, Dougie Beat says he plus nine, question mark. I don't know. I'm not a betting man. That's 
It's quite the big line for Boston, though, although they do blow teams out after they lose game two, game one. So that, that's something historic. And uh, maybe they know something we don't. Cough, cough, Scott Foster, cough, cough. So p- pretty big line. Um, well, the Heat, by the way, are were one of the worst teams against the spread all year. So take that as you will. So I, I don't think Vegas has them figured out either. Uh, Chad asked, wait, why is this the end of hangover time? Because Alf has a family and it's just tiring to do this. Don't worry. Heapy will still be going on. We've talked about this. Alf has mentioned this on air. Uh, but yes, yeah, this is a hangover time. So final hurrah. I'm glad that we kind of get this to go out on. It's tough raising. It's tough raising a baby and, uh, yelling about the heat drunk in your, in, in your den. It's tough out here. Uh, but yeah, so love y'all. Appreciate you for, for vibing with me the last 30 minutes. Uh, I like kind of doing these alone pods with Chad. It's nice to kind of hang out and talk to you guys and kind of give you my thoughts. But I have to go, and we will talk tomorrow pregaming me, Frankie, Coach Lou, Kenny, all that good stuff. Love you guys. See you.